Okay, so I woke up this morning to a bunch of messages about the performance video I did saying, yeah, but using the internal drive is not realistic. You have to do stuff with external drives because that's what everybody does. And of course, using the internal drive is going to be a better performance. I mean, it's a very fast drive, but because you asked for it, you've got it. I'm going to plug in my backup drive and we'll see how the video plays off of this. So let's get to it. Okay, so I've got my, my Lisi, 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 however you want to pronounce it, my backup drive, standard two terabyte um, USB-C drive. I buy these every year for my yearly backups of everything, along with my other storage, but I keep one of these for every year. So I'm gonna plug this guy in and we'll play some footage off this. I'll run the speed test so we can see the difference again and um, we'll see how it goes, all right? So let's go ahead and plug this guy in. And this should come up as 2020. There it is, way down here. So you can see my drive. Okay, we'll go to the disk speed test. And again, we'll start with the internal drive, just to make sure that we're on the right one, the minute Mac Mini. Okay, so we'll open that. We'll start a test. And as before, we're getting some pretty, pretty fast speeds here. All right, let's switch the target drive to the 2020 drive. And I'll start the speed test. So you can see this drive is ridiculously slower than the internal drive, only 98 megabytes per second. And it's gonna say that it's just not going to do the job here, all right? But this is about as typical of a scenario as we're going to get. Now, the fact is, I don't know what the results of this are going to be because I haven't done this before. And I didn't want to try and hedge it to say, you know, to cherry pick drives or anything. I'm just going for it here as live as I can. All right, we'll go to my Resolve 17 project. And I'm on the media page here. You can see my 2020 drive right here. And I'll open up 2020 and I'm gonna find some difficult footage to work with. I think Montezuma, no, Mosquito Pass. There we go. Mavic 2 Pro 10 bit D log in H265. All right, so I'll go ahead and drop this guy in here. Oops, there we go. Helps if I do it right. All right, so here's my Mosquito Pass Mavic 2 Pro raw folder. We can look at it, H265, 30 frames per second, 4K footage, and we'll drop over to the edit page. I'll do a new timeline. And let's just do a preview first. And the footage is playing perfectly smooth in the timeline or in the, the preview window. All right. Let's grab another clip here again bring up the metadata so you can see the footage that I'm working with. All right, I'll drop that onto the timeline here. Again, we'll just do a quick double check. Yep, playing nice and smooth. We'll go to the color page and um, I don't have my LUTs installed, so we'll just do kind of a quick color grade here. Um, 
we'll bump up some shadows, add some contrast, some mid-tone detail, and we'll give it a shot. Oh my gosh, it's playing at real time speed. Look at that. Uh, all right. Well, my timeline is at uh, 24 frames per second, which is how I output everything. Uh, let's add some, some color temperature to it, warm that sucker up a little bit, and we still have beautiful playback on here. Okay, let's go to our Fusion page. All right. And I'm going to do the same test kind of as I did before. I'll add a tracker. And I'll just do something real quick. I mean, if you're not familiar with the tracker, um, this is just a, it's how we're going to uh, tell the system what I want it to pay attention to. What, I, what do I want it to track? So I'm going to add two trackers here, and I'm going to track my tires. And I have to increase the, the window size there a little bit. I'm going to go to the beginning. And I don't need to do a whole lot on this, but it's going to only render that much of it. Go to the beginning, and I will track to the end. Well, that's not going to work because my tracker was off from the other frame I was on. All right. Uh, being stupid here, but it's first thing in the morning and I'm trying to do this for you guys as quickly as possible. Making sure my, my tracks are good. All right, now let's go ahead and track to the end again, and it should follow this along. Now doing tracking, I mean, I've never had a machine that could do this in real time. So it just, it takes what it takes. But there the vehicle goes. And it looks like it's doing about, I'd call about one frame per second. Fusion is definitely a difficult, uh, difficult feature on most any machine. It is going to take a lot of processing power. Now, this isn't to say that this still might be improved. I mean, this is only the second beta of an M1 optimized uh, piece of software. Now, this could get better. It may not get better. It might get better if you had 16 gigs of RAM. This is only a Mac Mini with 8 gigs of RAM. So it's hard to say if we'll ever see a performance increase on this base level machine. Uh, there's just no way of telling at this point. It doesn't seem to be bound anywhere, but um, there's still always room for improvement. But this is a base, base level machine. That is a consumer machine. This is not considered a pro editing powerhouse workstation. So we get what we get out of it. But still, for $6.99, this is doing tracking faster than anything else I've ever had before. Okay, without boring everybody or doing any cheating, um, you know, by <clears throat> uh, speeding things up, there we have our track. Okay, now I'll add some text. And mosquito, oops. <sighs> text and oops I didn't want to have anything selected again it is too early for me but because you guys asked I'm doing it mosquito pass and we connect that to the tracker and we come over 
Nope, we're going to select our tracker and we go to operation. We select match move. I'm going to, oops, not that. Take the text, rotate it a hair, and let's see some playback. Boom. Okay, I could have done a better job on the tracking, but you kind of get the point there. It is working. It is doing all this in real time. I'm going to go back to my edit page. And even though it needs to cache here, I can still play it. And it's got real time. We have real time tracking with color correction on a very inexpensive external drive. So hope this satisfies some people or at least uh, helps answer some questions about what the Mac Mini M1 or the MacBook Pro M1 or the MacBook Air M1 is capable when running off an external hard drive. Now again, I didn't know what the results of this were going to be. I was a little hesitant. I'm like, maybe, maybe it's people are right. Maybe this is really going to be where we see the bottleneck. But if you think about it, 4K footage isn't that much data when we're talking about hard drives like this. Now, this is, this is spinning media. This is not an SSD that I'm running off of. So you don't need 2,000 gigabytes of transfer. I mean, it's just not pushing that much data. All it needs to do is read the footage. So really, it's not surprising that it's working because all the processing is being done in Resolve, not off the hard drive. Whether it was just playing back the footage or doing it with all the effects is irrelevant. The footage is still playing off a hard drive that has enough bandwidth to push the footage through. Now, am I going to get the same result with high-end 8K footage? Nah, probably not because that requires more bandwidth but you can alleviate that with a faster drive. You could use, um, I don't have mine sitting here. You know, you could use a, an external SSD drive and get twice the performance or three times the performance of spinning media. So your results will vary based on your hardware, but understand that as long as the hard drive has enough bandwidth to push the footage out, adding all the stuff to it, is not going to affect your overall performance. So I hope this helps answer some questions about the performance of these new M1 based machines. This has been Kerry with Filmmaker Central. Please like, share, and subscribe. And again, if you have things that you want me to test on this, or you have questions about it, or you wanna see some other type of result, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to try it. I went out and spent the money on this thing to try and get these answers for myself and for you guys. So happy to, to help out with that. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.